it's very important that whenever somebody's looking at a report that they see the main message of the report straight away so why don't we add a message like this that can easily be understood by anybody looking at the report you look at the report you see switzerland is eight above budget everybody knows what's happening in the report and then below this you can add all your beautiful charts and visuals explaining the result in detail but adding a message like that can add a lot of value to the report and it just makes it easier to understand if you want to use our HTML visuals to do this it's a good idea to have a basic understanding of some of the most common HTML tags there's absolutely no need to be a web designer or an HTML expert in order to be able to work with the visuals, but still a basic understanding can help a lot. There is ways that websites are defined. There is certain rules of when to use which tag. In Power BI, these rules don't really apply because we don't care about search engine optimization and all that kind of stuff. So even though a lot of the tags we don't really need to use I'm still gonna walk you through some of these tags but then again um, explain to you why I wouldn't use them and why I would actually use different ones so let's start um, first things first let's get rid of this visual now because we want to start from scratch before I start creating a visual or a measure that returns some nice formatted text, I want to walk you through some of the most important HTML tags. So let me create a new measure called uh, HTML basics. Uh, we need to start with double quote and let me just start with the H1 which is the header one uh, which would be the top most header on a website and I just call it header 1 and with uh, the same the same tag needs to be closed so I add a slash um, in front of the h1 to close the tag and let's just see what happens when I add this to the visual so we have quite a big header it's bold and it just says header 1 turn off the tooltip okay but let's see what happens when I add a second header just copy this and this time I add h2 h2 and also close h2 I get header 2 we can also see that there is spacing between and we also see that the header 1 is slightly bigger than header 2 there's also header 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but I guess you, you get the picture. Um, in general, they just always get a little bit smaller. Let me just add one more. Header 3, it gets smaller. These are the header tags. Let me show you what a P tag looks like and what it does. The P, it actually stands for paragraph, and let's see what it does. So it's not a header, which means it's not bold anymore. Um, but let's, let's add a second one. And this time, I don't add it on a new line in my formula editor. I just paste it right after. I still get the line break. That's because my DAX formatting has nothing to do with how the visual displays the elements because the line breaks and the, the header being bold and big is all defined in HTML. So whatever we do in here with line breaks, it doesn't apply to the visual. So how would we actually create text that doesn't use line breaks? Of course, it's also HTML tags for this. Let's see what the diff tag does. Diff what happens if I add a second diff right after that one it still goes to a new line you can see new line but there's no gap in between so that's important and then the last one I want to show you is the span and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about when to use which one so the span 
good, but again, it only makes sense once we add a second one to see what happens. So you can see that the span is the only one that doesn't actually add a line break. So the span stays on the same line. So this is why we will use the span a lot. The span we use to manipulate or format specific elements within another tag. So we might have a title, h1, and just one of the words within the title should be colored red. Then we would nest a span within an h1. Um, or we would also nest a span within a diff or a p, of course. But the span is important. The span we use to individually style specific elements. So I would say the span one is the most important one. The second most important one is the diff because also the diff it can be used for anything and the diff also doesn't contain any predefined formatting so the diff we can define what's the font size what's the color what, what what's all this so the diff and the span are very flexible and I would recommend using those but still I'm gonna go ahead and create a measure that uses some of the other ones the, the headers maybe the P I don't know yet um, and then show you what it looks like and then step by step we might need to replace some of these predefined tags because they just have some logic included which we want to get rid of but uh, let's see so again this visual here we just get rid of um, and create our a new measure. Before we do this, let's just quickly look at what kind of data we have in our data model. We have a list of countries, we have actuals and budget. Quite a simple data model. So let's create a measure and call it message. And we want to create a measure that returns the selected country and then the variance between actuals and budget and depending on if the value is above or below budget, we want to conditionally format it with a different font color. So I would create some variables first. I would create a variable for the selected country. Um, so we use the selected value for the country. I would also create a variable for the value we want to show, which is just a variance between actuals and watch it and let's just return and let's just say we want the country because the country is sort of the, the, the title we want to have the country as an, a big title so let's just use the h1 and what do we want to show as h1 it will be our country and let's just hit enter let's just see what this looks like so far so by the message we get the name of the selected country okay we also wanted to see the actual value so what we want to add is of course the var acbu and then you will see but I did this on purpose there's no space in between the country and the number eight and let me turn off the tooltip just quickly so we also need to be careful to add the spaces within our code so just between two double quotes we just add a space and now we have a space in between Switzerland and the number eight and let's also add some dynamic text which changes depending on the result so I'm gonna add another variable which is var text and that one is actually depending on the result from above so if the var acpu bigger than zero then we want to have a text that says above budget if not then it should be below budget. This time we don't forget the space and percent double quote space and our var text 
very good. Okay, so um, we actually only wanted to have Switzerland as H1. So we need to make sure that after the word Switzerland, we close the H1 tag. So the rest jumps to a new line. And then we have quite a big gap. This is still coming from the H1. So we cannot con we don't have any control over this gap because the H1 predefines it. It's one of the reasons why I would say, do we really need to add or use the, the H1? Why don't we just use a diff or a span? Um, so we can we define what if there what what's the font size and what's the, the, the font decoration if it's bold or underlined. Um, so I would use a, a diff style instead. So if I just change it to diff, of course we lose all the formatting, that was clear, but we can now manually add it again. So we can make this bold again, there's different ways, the easiest way is probably by just adding a B for bold tag, and of course close it again, so only the country is bold. And if we still want a line break, after our diff, we can just add it. BR is a break. So see, now it jumped to a new um, line. So we now have full control over the styling. What I want to do now is I want to change the, the color of the text down below, which is coming from this variable. So I can also add the formatting within the variable. And here I would use a span. And the span style should be um, the color. And for the positive, we want this to be green. Then I can copy it and paste it down below here. And negative should be red. OK, so Switzerland, eight above budget. Take a different country, one that's negative. Canada one below budget. Let's talk about font size a little bit because let's just say this is too small. We could use the visual setting and just say make this bigger. Or we could also say in the content formatting make everything within the visual bigger. 200% and everything becomes bigger. Or we can just define it in our measure and make it dynamic depending on the outcome of some measure or um, let the user decide what font size they want to, to see. Maybe add a, uh, a what if parameter for font size. Um, there's lots of possibilities, but let's just say the country we want to have bigger. So the diff, we add some style for the font size. It should be um, quite big, 50 pixel. So our diff is bigger. And then what we also want to use is the second line should be bigger as well. So OK, we already have a span, but the span here is only the text, not the number. But we also want the number to have a different font. So we can just add it. Um, in here. So after the diff, after the country, maybe also after the line break, also this space we actually don't need anymore. Here we can say we just nest everything below into a span. A span with a specific style and we said we wanted to do the, the font size. Um, the other one was 50. Let's take half of that. 25 pixel. And then this is 25 pixel. So what happens now when I change the font size in here? The font size doesn't actually change. Only the font size of the, the BR actually changes because it's in between the diff and the span. But the text itself, it stays the same. So every 
element, every design element we define in, in DAX on HTML overrules the settings from the formatting pane. Um, but maybe we still want this to take effect. And one way to do this is by just replacing the pixels with percentage. So I could say the header is 100%. And the rest is, well, half the size. So now let's see, 100% in 50. And now when I increase the size, everything gets bigger, but still the country is still double the size than the rest. And maybe for now, I would also probably get rid of this to reduce the extra space and that, I think, looks more or less than what we initially had. Let me just add the initial measure. Same thing. Okay, in the initial one, we also had an underline. Um, this could be done quite easily, we could say. We also want to underline, but maybe just not the number, but only the, the text. So we could just say, in here, we add a U tag which means you are underlined. And of course we should, it doesn't make a difference for this case because it's the end of the code, but still we should also close the U tag again. And of course I need to add a double quote in the end. And yes, this is how you can use HTML to, to style text um, or elements within tables, within KPI cards, within SVGs. Um, let me just make myself a little bit bigger. So any element that you have, be it values or text, can be styled individually. And as you can see in here, that was a simple example, but of course we could make any element conditionally formatted. Um, there's actually also videos where we show you how to conditionally format elements of, of tables, of KPI cards. There's a video about conditionally create smiley faces. There's, there's a lot of stuff. Um, I would recommend that you go ahead and download the sample report from the website because that's updated on a regular basis with new ideas, with new elements. This is where you can um, get inspired to see what's possible because this really what we saw today was just the start and I think it's a good starting point to get some basic understanding of HTML but to be honest if you're working in Power BI and you have mastered or nearly mastered DAX then um, adding a little bit of HTML will be will be quite easy so please keep going I hope you enjoy working with our visuals and of course, as always, if something doesn't work out the way you plan it, simply reach out and we're always happy to help. Thank you very much for watching.